Without patients with liver disease, we hope to have HBV cure, HEP linkage to care, screening and treating NASH, and the world is beautiful, but it would be also most wonderful. So I'm pleased to give this lecture on targets and new drugs for hep B infection. And fourth, it's always nice to start with good news from last year. Uh, we have been twice World War champions, and uh, it's always a, a pleasure. Uh, as you know, so there was uh, Zinedine Zidane, Zizou, and Mbappé. And these two footballers are migrants. Uh, Zidane is from uh, Algeria, and Mbappé has a mother from Algeria and a father from Cameroon. These are my disclosures. Let's start with the agenda. So first, is an HBV cure a priority? Is it mandatory? Is it necessary? What are the goals, the endpoints, the objectives of treatments? We have to go back to science, happy virology, viral sites, targets to understand, to develop new treatments. I will mainly concentrate on direct acting antivirals. I will discuss also host antivirals, but I will not speak of checkpoint inhibitors or CAR-C because that are too preliminary and then a conclusion. Hep B infection is a major medical need. There are estimation that one third of individuals have been exposed to Hep B infection, and around 257 million people are living with Hep B. It's the main cause of cirrhosis, hepatocellular carcinoma, transplantation, and there's around one million deaths per year. So a large number of patients, and patients matter. There has been a fantastic drug development with many drugs. And this drug has long-term efficacy, good safety, favorable profile. However, we have to give this drug all the life of the patients. TEF has been recently approved, but is not available in many countries yet. So do we need an HBV cure? Is it mandatory? Is it a priority? Yes, we have a large number of patients, and we have 30 millions of new Hep B infection per year. There is a vaccine with excellent efficacy. However, there's a problem of implementation with these campaigns. We have NUC analogs with high efficacy and favorable tolerability. However, they act at a very late stage on the reverse transcriptase. That does not affect the DNA, HBS, or conversion is rare. HCC is reduced but maintains. And there's the issue with long life duration, cost compliance, discrimination of these patients with an ongoing infection. You see the limited access to treatments, less than 9% of the patients are diagnosed, and among them, less than 8% are treated. So very big problem with screening, being caged to care. Also, S-loss is very rarely obtained. You see with analogs in e-negative patients is a rare event. Therefore, you are all convinced that hep B cure is a priority. What are the goals of future therapies. What are the endpoints? First, to have a biochemical response defined as ILT normalization. We know that if we achieve ILT normalization, the prognosis is better. It's true for Hep B. It's true for all liver disease. To achieve a DNA suppression, which is a partial vertical cure, all these clinical endpoints have to be achieved off therapy when you stop treatment after a finite duration and they should be maintained on long term. Then you could have E loss in E positive patients. HBS loss for functional cure, which is associated with a good prognosis. CCC DNA, which is called a sterilizing cure. However, we don't have good Markers to evaluate CCC DNA, we have to perform the liver biopsy. The technique is not standardized, so we need new surrogate markers of CCC DNA. But the most important will be to demonstrate with this finite treatment duration in the future that we achieve Hep C, HCC decrease, fibrosis regression, increased survival, and improvement in quality of life. So this is the clinical endpoint for future studies. If we want to 
discover or to make drug development, we have to go back to the virology to understand the viral cycle. The happy virus is a, a double strand partially DNA virus with a capsid, an envelope. And there's some particularity because there's many empty particles, filamentous, spherical. It is believed that the virus produced a large amount of empty particles to escape to the immune system, to induce tolerance. And so it's very important to understand the virus. The genome is a compact genome structure with four overlapping open reading frames. Reverse transcriptase DNA polymerase domain overlaps with surface antigens, and it encodes four sets of viral proteins, HBS, HG, HB core HG, viral polymerase, and HBX protein. What about the cycle? The first step is the entry with the NTCP receptors who has been identified recently by a Chinese group and published in 2012. The entry is complex with many, many co-receptors. Then the capsid with the DNA is translated to the necklace with the DNA, there's the possibility of integration in the host DNA, which makes complex the situations to target this DNA. You have the CCC DNA formations, which is like a mini chromosome within the necklace, and is believed to be the reservoir and responsible for the permanence of infected cells. You have CCC DNA transcriptions, translation, and capsidation. Then you have DNA synthesis, and there's the possibility for this capsid with the DNA to go back to the nucleus to increase the pool of CCDNA and to maintain infection, but also to go through the endoplasmic reticulum for the envelope and the secretion. And in the secretion, you have the complete particle, the dense particle, but many secretion of S antigen, empty particles, which is believed to induce immune tolerance and escape to the immune system. And what is very interesting is that each step of viral cycle is a potential target for drug development. So any step can be blocked theoretically, and let's look to the most promising important direct acting antivirals. What is also very interesting is if you reduce the replication and the presentation of the virus particle, you can restore immunity. So you can restore CD4, CD8, T cell response to eradicate, eliminate the infected cells. So I think that we can have dual mechanism blocking the virus and increasing immune response together. I will discuss on direct antivirals, those who are available for data that have been presented in the last ASLD or ESL mainly, and already I apologize because I have to make a selection, many original contribution, I will not speak of them. So first, the happy receptor, the NTCP receptor. This is the figure of the receptors with the mechanism of endocytosis. So we can block M3. And we have entry inhibitor, Mercredex, that is ongoing on trials for Hep B, but also for Delta hepatitis, because you know that Delta share the same entry mechanism than the B virus with the envelope of the HBS. These results have been presented last WSLD, and you can see in this phase two, with Mercredex plus PEG interferon for 48 weeks, there was reduction in HDV RNA and the more important reduction in the RNA was observed with the combination of PEG interferon plus Mercredex. Interestingly, there was also reduction in HBS quantification, and uh, there is ongoing program studies with Hep B and Delta hepatitis. The capsid is a very attractive target because the capsid interacts with CCDNA synthesis. So the capsid has several holes. It allows the entry in the nucleus, it allows the assembly of the virus, but also it allows the CCDNA persistence. So with one stone, you can have several birds. So I think it's a potential target of very high interest. 
Let's look to the results. This is a capsid assembly modulator by Jensen, 6379, and you have decrease of DNA after four weeks on treatment. So I think decrease of DNA is observed before you have a decrease in HBS quantity. For decrease in HBS quantification, we need more long-term uh, study, so the treatment will be given for 24 weeks or 48 weeks, and we are waiting for these data, which are very encouraging, and so far the treatment is safe. You see the core protein allosteric modifier, ABI 731 from Assembly Biosense, and you can see the decrease in DA after 28 weeks on treatment. It's 12 patients for 28 days. It's early data, but already we can see the decline, which is dose dependent with this compound. And of course, we need more long-term data to see if there's decrease in S antigen. There was also a promising target, which is RNA. Because if you block RNA, you block traduction and formation of the virus. There was issue for RNA with delivery, and there has been improvement in delivery. So with this system, the hepatocyte uptake via Galnac interactions, and so you can deliver the treatments. And you can see AB729 from Arbutus, you have preclinical models, and you can see that the HBV DNA is obtained and HBS decline is obtained. What is interesting, if theoretically, if you have HBS decline, you can induce immune response and restore immunity. Therefore, I think it will be very interesting to have also immunological studies. So if you have increase in transaminases, it might be, it could be also toxicity, we have to be very careful, but it could be just the clearance of infected hepatocyte and the immune reactivation. RNA interference therapeutics, and you can see the HBS uh, decline in uh, some patients who have been treated. What is interesting also is that these treatments have a pangenotypic effect. They are effective in all patients with all the different genotypes. Of course, all the data available are phase one and phase two, so we need also future results. Now, our next target is CCC DNA. It's a very important target because it's believed to lead to the Hep B persistent. CCC DNA persistent is thought to be the cause of chronic Hep B. It exists as a mini chromosome in the necklace. It persists in the absence of active viral replication. The level is reduced, but is not eliminated with treatment. So in HBV cure, theoretically, we need elimination or suppression or control of CCC DNA. It would be important also to have markers to follow the patients. And now we have also ongoing studies on marking mRNA in the blood to see if it's correlated with CC DNA. So I think that the field is evolving very rapidly and many group of research are working on these issues. You can see that we can act on CC DNA. First, you have the CC DNA synthesis formations. You have the transcriptions and translation. And HBX protein is very important also uh, for the CCDNA. We can first inhibit CCDNA formations. So then you have no CCDNA, inhibition of HBV transcription replication. We can also make CCDNA silencing by epigenetic modification or also HBX, HBC inhibitors. And then you have also inhibition of HBV transcription replication through epigenetic modification. And you can also have CCC DNA elimination, immune mediate, by deleting hepatocyte infected by the CDNA, by immune response or gene editing nuclei. So three ways of eliminating CCC DNA. Of course, this can be also combined. The issue with CCC DNA is the off-target issue at this time. You are very cautious about uh, affecting the host DNA and all the patients are doing very well. So we have to go step by step very carefully. It's one issue with drug development in Hep B. Patients are doing very well. So to have a cure, we do not accept any safety issue. So this is a selection of targets who are very important. The entry, the CAPC, the CCDNA. Let's discuss some host antivirals, but very few are on development. First, the toll-like receptors family. 
As you know, toll-like receptors have a dual role. It can reduce directly HBV DNA, but it could also increase immune response by inducing interferon pathways and inflammatory cytokines, which will lead to elimination of infected cells. And you can see this proof of concept study in mouse model, TLR7 agonist plus CPAM, and you can see decrease in HBV DNA and decrease in HBS. So it's interesting because you can have a dual effect by reducing DNA and also increasing immune response. Of course, mice is not men, it's early data, and we need to go in clinics in humans. There is also the possibility to increase rig I pathway. Uh, you see that when a DNA is uh, on the surface of the cell, it's recognized by different mechanism as a double strand DNA, and it activates rig I, which activate pro-inflammatory cytokine. So people developed agonist of rig I, which is inarigivir, rig I agonist, and you can see 20 weeks HBV DNA decrease with this oral therapeutics, which act as an agonist of rig I, inducing interferon immune response. So I think also it's very early data, but it's interesting to combine immune factors plus direct antivirals. We have also new interest about the mitochondrial immune response, which has been important in many liver diseases. We know that HBV escape the immune response, it escape the mitochondrial immune response, and we could also increase the mitochondrial response to increase HBV immunization. There's a recent review in gastroenterology which explained the new role of mitochondria in immunity. So dear colleagues, uh, HBV is very important. We have all to work together to make feasible an HBV cure. There's many, many groups, studies ongoing on research to understand better the fundamental, the HEP-B replication. Many groups are working on drug developments. And now we believe we need DAS plus host, but maybe in the future when we will have very strong direct acting as for HEP-C, First, it was interferon plus a direct antiviral. It might be several DAs that could allow HEP-B cure program to achieve an HBV cure. So I will end with maybe two sentences, two quotations. Failure is the foundation of success. So we have to accept to have a low profile, humility. It will be a long way to have a cure, but I think we have to learn and we have all to make effort to achieve this HBV cure. The second one is a pessimist sees the difficulty in every opportunity. An optimist sees the opportunity in each difficulty. And let's be optimist all together, work together, and achieve this HBV elimination. Thanks for your attention.